I match box and I have ice cream frozen frozen that's not ice cream that's the frozen uh, juice but still ice uh it's a lot of sugar mm, i'm after two of these today so that's a uh, third stick <laughs> uh, we have news from sticks mmo bite about throne and liberty which i am waiting with 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 uh, impatience and right now slow hope that it will be good but still but still because i heard news from korea and i want to see what uh, other people are saying maybe i'm missing something so now from streamers at least from streamers that played well, right now in Korea. Here you go. Now let's enjoy my ice cream and let's watch. We finally got an update for Throne and Liberty. We've been waiting all finally. year for this one. All year. No, we've been waiting for several years for this one. The official Throne and Liberty Twitter made a tweet stating claim the throne and shape the future of Cilicium. Throne and Liberty arrives September 17th on PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series XS. Open beta test starts July 18th. More details coming soon. There's a trailer for this if you're interested, but it kind of just goes over everything we've already seen. Makes the game look a lot better than everything I've heard from players that play the Korean version. What I'm more interested in is the article that is associated with the release date announcement. How Throne and Liberty brings online RPG gameplay into a new era. Note here that they do not claim this is an MMORPG. They claim that this is an online RPG. I'm not sure why they decided to omit the MMO here. If I hit control F and do a search, there is no mention of MMO anywhere on this entire page. Even navigating on over to the homepage, you can see the subtext claim the throne, immerse yourself in the- Suspicious, I wonder why. Maybe they are making it a some kind of co-op RPG? Exhilarating world of Throne and Liberty, a free-to-play game centered on guild-focused combat. Not a free-to-play MMO RPG. Not a free-to-play MMO. A free-to-play game. Let's go and read through the article that was posted by Amazon themselves. At the top, we see what seems to be a short synopsis of the game. Throne and Liberty is a free-to-play online role-playing game. Once again, not a free-to-play, massively multiplayer online role-playing game, just an online role-playing game. Launching on September 17, 2024. I hope that's a typo or a bad translation maybe from Korean or this is uh, from Amazon. The game developed by South Korea-based developer NCSoft oh, takes is, players uh, on an epic an journey to save Cilicium, a vast and dynamic living environment wait, that almost wait, serves wait, as- Wait, 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 Who wrote the article? Where is this article? Release date announcement. How Throne and Liberty. Release date announcement. The Korean version. What I'm more interested in is the article that is associated with the release date announcement. How Throne and Liberty brings online RPG gameplay oh, into a new era. It doesn't say where, uh, where the article came from, but still. Maybe in the description down below, I will check later. For my own diligent research. Probably the game developed by South Korea-based developer NCSoft takes players on an epic journey to save Cilicium, a vast and dynamic living environment that almost serves as another character in the game's story. Cilicium's geography and environment change during the course of play, presenting players with unique challenges and opportunities on the fly, and ensuring that the moment-to-moment -moment experience is exciting and unpredictable. That's not what I've heard from Korean players, or players that played the Korean version. Nevertheless, I'm- At least- which um, streamers I watched um, kind of disappointed at uh, guild or clan systems because it's easy to bot that uh, those uh, to bot yourself to the top. Oh, whatever. Let's watch. Totally on board with this description. And before we continue, I do want to note here, it doesn't matter 
what I've heard, I'm gonna play this and I'm gonna stream it. It doesn't matter what people have told you or what they've said in videos, just try the game. At the end of the day, do not let anyone influence your ability to play this game. Don't let them decide whether or not you play it. Play it and then make up your own mind based off of your own experiences. With that in mind, that- I agree with that. Never, never, ever, unless it's expensive. Unless it's very expensive game. But Throne of Liberty is a free to play game. So we will lose only what time, but maybe at least I'm going to play it if I will have the possibility. I don't know yet because um, uh, my limitations, most of my games I play on GeForce now and if uh, Throne and Liberty is not on um, GeForce Now, or maybe other platforms that will work for me, which I didn't try yet, maybe, maybe, we will see, we will see. I'm kind of, kind of uh, hope so uh, that uh, the game will be on GeForce Now, because... Um, new we have new world on geforce okay and i ag uh, agree with the the idea that uh, if you have possibility try it yourself maybe you will find in any type of game you will find something that pulls you in it doesn't matter what other people say have your fucking opinion have a spine goddamn you i have ice cream but i don't have spine I have a lot of sugar in my blood now, and then... And, and. That isn't going to stop me from reading through this and either praising or criticizing what I read. Gather your guild and conquer the world. The vast world of Cilicium is not one that you'll be exploring alone. Playing with others is a core part of the experience. From uh -huh. massive player versus player PvP battles to wildly unpredictable player versus player versus environment. So I, I feel like they're, they're really touting here the PvP aspect of the game. This game might not be for players that dislike PvP them. There are... I, um... What I've heard from streamers, what I've heard, uh, what I've read about the game and what developers said about the game, its main focus is PvP. Castle sieges, uh, massive PvP battles, uh, maybe some kind of player versus player PvP environment versus environment. Oh, that's um, probably a a a a um, world bosses, something like that. Uh, this game is most focused on that, especially in the end game. Dungeons and of course guilds. Throne and Liberty is a game where players survive and thrive through strategic decisions and how they forge their alliances is critical. So that sucks for me. That probably sucks for a lot of you who want to play this game solo. While much of the game's content can be enjoyed solo, I Solo and farmers, PV PVEers. Oh, well, there you go. Much of the game, but not all of it. Joining a guild is a way to get the greatest experience out of Throne and Liberty. Okay. In Throne and Liberty, there are numerous goals that can be achieved through guilds, including guild rankings, conquest battles, castle sieges, said Moon Siop Lee, game design director at NCSoft. Guilds are at the core of strategic competitive battles. Guild members not only work together to achieve common goals, but also benefit from a guild reward system that includes distributing raid items and cheering rewards for events among members. However, the greatest appeal of a guild is a sense of belonging it provides, ensuring that you always have companions by your side, which is honestly a great feeling, a great aspect. Yeah, 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 but the, the problem is with that experience, most of the time, uh... uh Playing with clans, playing with guilds, in my experience, I cannot enjoy uh, the game as I want to. Because there are requirements, there, there are mm, uh, maybe things that I don't want to do, or, or spend as much time on things that I w don't want to do. Maybe, uh, for example, I don't want to do a... a, a some kind of quest that is necessary but yeah i i i i won't try to explain i just 
most of the time i uh, i uh, if i do new stuff i try to do it solo if that is possible because most of the time i cannot enjoy myself because everybody is in a hurry and trying to finish his uh, finish stuff uh, most efficiently that's uh, why the meta is killing games in my opinion because people are trying every time uh, to meta out uh, meta fun out of everything count every possible best uh, way to finish raid fight in pvp or whatever i hate that it's not fun of MMOs, but I feel like a lot of MMOs these days target that single player aspect, mm -hmm. and that's because most players these Be one of the reasons why because most of the people don't have enough time. I already said that I think in uh, my other videos when I talked about uh, MMOs, but I re will repeat myself because players don't have enough time. Uh, uh, it's hard uh, with other players uh, to. Uh, have a schedule because uh, especially in games that are global uh, different time zones different work hours uh, because many people are still uh, ha have have uh, full-time jobs and and uh, in my opinion that's why most of the play most of players uh, I think are casuals and they just want to enjoy game in their own way and in their own time. They want to play the game from a single player perspective. That's why WoW introduced some companion dungeons, Final Fantasy XIV's entire story mode. Like all of the dungeons are now compatible with your AI controlled party members and companions. People just, they, they don't want to have all the crap that comes with relying on other people. So this might especially wipes when you're doing raid for uh, especially when the raid uh, uh, is uh, in the story you don't have to uh, it's easy, uh, uh, when the raids uh, in these games are built if one player fails a uh, whole raid wipes i mean everybody dies probably uh, give some content for solo players and enjoyable content maybe uh, some kind of content uh, three for three four players not the full fucking party of six nine twelve or whatever in the other games because sometimes for me I'm very I'm not enjoying playing with other players with people that I don't know, and it's hard to communicate with them. When I play with my friends, I know every fucking cool, every fucking bad decision that they gonna make, and they know mine, bad my bad decisions that I'm gonna make, and we are prepared for that. Maybe we will scream on each other, but with other players if uh, if somebody will say something to me or i will try to say something to anybody that um, probably will offend them or just trying to explain the 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 things that i want them to do or they will try uh, probably somebody will be angry and somebody will use very prof a lot of profanity Might not necessarily be appealing to the same audience that it necessarily would have appealed to just like five years ago. Conquest battles and castle sieges are two unique pieces of content that help Throne and Liberty shine in PvP. Conquest battles are large scale PvP, PvP events again. where guilds compete over two objectives boon stones and rift stones. The guild that controls either gets valuable buffs and guild resources, and the guild owning a rift stone also gets the exclusive opportunity to challenge a daily field boss. Castle sieges are massive scale battles where up to thousands of players clash over the control of a castle. This chaotic, thrilling experience involves not just sheer numbers, but also sound strategy. Players must tactically allocate their forces, effectively use unique elements like golems, and secure respawn points by capturing strategic resurrection sites. Even smaller guilds can participate by capturing
cold. Wait a moment. Need to focus. Everything is cold now. It's not a brain freeze. But it still doesn't feel very good. Okay, let's continue. Entering looting sites to collect taxes, making castle sages an engaging event for all players regardless of the guild size. Once again, this is a heavily PvP game, or it, it makes it seem like a heavily PvP they are, mm, They're marketing this as a PvP, and at least from Korean players, it feels like a, 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 a PvP-focused game, but still, as I watched, as they play, there are some fun things in the game, so maybe I will find something to enjoy. I, I, I kind of feel like I'll be disappointed for, uh, for the end game because maybe somebody will talk about that. Uh, Sticks, I mean, will talk about that. Uh, that 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 uh, most of the end game will be focused on PvP and clan activities. So that's that will be a problem oriented game blue protocol on the other hand has no pvp so if you blue protocol is a fucking gotcha game want to participate and it is not an mmo in the pvp and have a pvp centric mmo that is new and fresh this will probably be for you if you want one that's the exact opposite of that then blue protocol will be for you but uh you're probably not getting blue protocol this year anymore before we discuss throne of liberty any deeper allow me to take a moment to thank my incredible patrons over on patreon Such allow for me to continue to do that's dedicated good. videos like this every single day you guys are phenomenal and i can't thank you all enough for the support now let's keep going play with your friends and make new adversaries while conquest battles and castle sieges are massive pvp focused affairs throne of liberty also blends pvp and pve in an interesting way through its unique pv pve dungeon so you lie, like when you're running a dungeon you're killing a boss monster and some other dude comes in and kills you uh, let's continue on i guess i, th I thought that was uh pvp P uh, pvp v e uh w was not about dungeons i thought that will be uh a thing uh, that will be a uh, world bosses open world thing the development team took this direction to solve a problem that can be common you mean uh global dungeons that everybody can jo uh, enter in group co-op content fatigue pve can be a very challenging and enjoyable experience at first but once you reach the required level, it can become repetitive. Yeah, that's just MMOs in a nutshell. Even the most difficult raids are thrilling the first time you clear them, but after that, it's just repetition until you get the desired rewards. That, that's just part of the grind. That's literally the core, the skeleton of MMO. And yet, if, 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 uh, yes, I agree. I agree. Uh, because, because, because if the raid is enjoyable, it is good raid with great and interesting mechanics, not some kind of, uh uninteresting thing with uh, no uh, fun mechanics or just point and click point and click point and click a some kind of stupid mechanic and we all we all dead uh raids f fatigue because most raids are not interesting mechanically first of all Second of all, uh, they are built uh, uh, like um, they are built. For example, okay, for example, uh, Lost Ark. Uh, most of the end game bosses are built. Uh, if one player dies in the party in the raid, uh, then uh, whole squad is wiped out uh, uh, somehow. I mean. If somebody fails some kind of mechanic, whole party dies. This is not fun. If I join party to fight some kind of boss for loot, please make... And I do this uh, one time a week, one time a day, uh, dailies, weeklies, whatever. It doesn't have to be very hard or one player death means wipe. Uh, it just needs to be fun one if the most annoying thing in this to me 
when somebody dies uh, the the party dies somebody misses mechanic or somebody sleeps in this is not enjoyable make raids interesting pvp introduces new variables into repetitive situations yeah like you spend all that time doing the repetitive dungeon only to be killed by another player and have to start the entire thing again extending how long it might have taken to successfully complete the dungeon or at least that's what i get from this maybe that's completely different and you can't be killed within the dungeon i don't know we're gonna find out so wait you cannot be killed in the dungeon so what how 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 does uh, this will be implemented I'm trying to guess here. Maybe you are in. Mm, I think we had something, uh, something like that in lineage. Uh, we go into boss. Mm, mm, boss uh, bosses there uh, for end game bosses. Antaras Valakas were not uh, open world. There were quests to do to enter the domain of Raid Boss. And uh, there were PvP zone, but when you enter the Raid Boss chambers, nobody can enter. Mm, maybe something like that. Or uh, maybe if they enter the Raid Boss room, everybody fights in the territory, but... Uh, when you die, you don't have to uh, start all over again. You just have to uh, run from uh, some kind of nearish uh, spawn point in the dungeon. Run back and fight the uh, enemy clan, enemy guild. Uh, somehow this sounds a little bit endless, but still somehow, uh, somehow chased off the... The enemy clan, maybe? Maybe. Yeah, the PvPvE dungeons in Throne of Liberty are some of the game's highlights, but even the development team can't pick a favorite among them. This feels like asking which child is the cutest and most lovable among many, joked Lee when asked which dungeon he felt was the game's highlight. Each dungeon has a different atmosphere and requires different play mechanisms. I'm really curious to see which will win. But th that really doesn't like, th so they're like, oh, look at this, PvPvE dungeons. Okay, what does that entail? We're not telling you. Yes, yes, that's exactly. They are not telling anything that's important here. It it doesn't. Oh. It's better not to read this article. It's better uh, to do, just watch how the players try to. Play, uh, I mean, Korean players uh, in Korean servers try. Uh, Mm, try to play the game the fucking why why there's no explanation figure it out yourself. your your game exists in other region you're trying to you're trying to somehow pull in global uh, uh, other countries EU, uh, NA, and other regions. What the? F That's it. That's all whole information. Everybody is annoyed in, in uh, repetitive dungeons and dungeon bosses. So we added a PvP in the dungeon. And how that will work? Nobody knows. Somehow, I think peop uh, people that wrote this article don't know either. So, try it out firsthand, and then you'll see whether you like it or not. I, I mean, I guess I'm gonna have to Google that, this because I'm- That's bad advertising. In my opinion. I'm kinda curious now. Freedom to play your way. Whether it's running a dungeon with your guildmates or sieging a castle with thousands of other players, combat is at the heart of these experiences. And Throne Liberty comes with many different options for how you can build your character and take them into battle. Unlike many other online RPGs, not unlike many other MMORPGs, no, online RPGs. So maybe they're just uh, misusing terms here for, for, for this. They're not using MMO in, in the terms, but 
because because they're just lost. This game ditches the traditional class system for a different approach, a dual weapon system. The problem with the traditional class system is that you have to start from scratch if you want to try a new class, suddenly. This often leads players to create multiple characters, trying to develop them all, and then eventually focus back on their main class if the others don't work out. In Drone Liberty, we wanted to provide an environment where players could actively try new things without such constraints. This is also going to very, very strongly impact the overall sales of skins, because if you don't have alternate characters, then you're not going to have to buy outfits and stuff for other characters either. By simply equipping a weapon, players can access most of that weapon's skills. At most, not all. And through the transfer system, they can transfer the enhancement they've invested into other items. That's actually a very cool system. The system lowers the barrier to players trying out different builds. They won't have to abandon the character they've built in order to try something new. The dual weapon system can also give players a feeling that they've created their own unique class by linking unique combinations of weapons and skills. That actually does sound very cool. Yeah. More, more possibilities, more choices, always a good thing. Experiments? Finding the best way, uh, the best way uh, to what fits me and other people. <laughs> That's always, always a good thing. Uh, uh, yeah, probably um, uh, there will be a um, thing in the game, in the player community. The thing that I hate most is chasing metas. Searching for metas, and I hope in uh, PvE dungeons and uh, raids and boss fights and parties uh, that, uh, at least at the moment when I will be playing this game, if I'm gonna play the game, that um, players won't be assholes uh, for... Uh, me to me or for uh, to other people because we don't want to use the bills that they want us to use i mean the people that w want to use metas i'm rant i'm i know i'm i'm ranting too much about meta but i fucking hate it and i hate it when people start to say don't use this weapon don't use th that build i mm. I love that build. I love that weapon. Fuck you. Thanks. I'm just, they but, say, mo but that's not the last time I'm talking about this. Most of the weapon skills, not all of them. Exploring a world of wonder. When designing the world of Cilicium, we started with a planetary scale, much larger than a continent, said Gumin Han, narrative design director at NCSoft. The planet Navkria, the, the, how, how do they come up with these names? I swear to God, like. Ak Sorry, kitty. I scared you. Sorry, sorry, sir. That's how they think of the name. They drop something and ha pull. That's the name. Is it? Th That's a smart thing. Uh, there, there must be like a fantasy name generator. They just type it. They just like click generate. And they're like, yeah, that name right there. That sounds good. Let's go with that one. This is a world where the source of magical power fundamental to the. Who gives a shit when they uh, how they think of the name uh, uh, of names? Uh, I, I still, uh, still uh, admire. Uh, Fuck, I forgot the name of the guy who wrote Dragon Ball. Akira Toriyama. How he came up with names to his, to his characters. S things that exist in other languages. And we are not looking at musical instrument piccolo uh, as, we, uh, as we should. We are hearing piccolo. And we think about green guy with antennas and fangs. Cool. The fantasy resides. A now, and yet the name says Hak Hoo! That magic enables the world of Throne and Liberty to operate very differently than what players have experienced in other online RPGs. Not MMORPGs, but online RPGs. This foundation allowed for us to define a unique. I hope that's some kind of type or some kind of misunderstanding about the this. Uh, MMO online whatever I hope and that's not some kind of smart way to uh, hide the uh, 
hide the game type, game mode, or... I'm kind of scared right now about the game. Natural phenomena in Throne and Liberty and conceptualize an ancient ecosystem in the world, added uh, Ho Siok Xiong, art director at NCSoft. As a result, we created places like Laslan, a typical medieval harbor city, and the monolith wastelands where fantastical structures coexist within a seemingly standard desert. We also designed distinctive locations like Vienta Village, a desert settlement with varying elevations. So what I'm hearing is, we have some fantasy areas cool. From what I've seen visually and aesthetically from Throne and Liberty, it's a very beautiful game, but at the same time, it doesn't really like feel contrastingly different to any of the other fantasy medieval games I've seen. The many ma And yet, what the fuck do you want? We're not talking about uh, inventing the wheel here. We live at the times where uh, hmm I don't want to say this, but still, somehow it feels like this, that almost every idea is used or just people are becoming lazy. And yet still, still, people are not using the old ideas about uh, fantasy games. We're not using uh, same races that, are, uh, uh, that exist in our mythology. Uh, some of the games used to, like uh, World of Warcraft, like the Lineage, use the same races. Main races, I mean playable races. But they start to invent uh, in the future, when the game expands. They t start to use every uh, all kinds of weed, probably, to create uh, um, new races. Why? Why, why, why? So... I'm just um, probably too conservative for this, but I wished that th they would stay on tracks with the old mytho mythology with races, elves, orcs, humans, dark elves, high elves, light elves, whatever. But still, mm, don't start to fucking create some kind of aliens drop from the sky and that's how uh, on our land, on our uh, world, there were gods and there now we have aliens or any type of interesting race. I have... There are too many games where uh, 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 in recent years or... Uh, when the game fell off, most of the time when the game started to fall from grace, from heights, uh, they introduced uh, some kind of dumb race. Aliens fell from the sky, some kind of um, running from something, but still, fucking aliens from space! We have such a, in the world, such a rich mythology. Elves, orcs, uh, humans, wizards, um, all types of race. Fucking open, uh, use uh, Lord of the Rings, all, all books. We have all types of mobs in the games. We cannot use the, uh, those races as a playable uh, race, playable characters. Why? Why the limitation? We have lizard men. No game. Oh wait. But but they are not called lizard men, so that doesn't count. In uh, Elder Scrolls series series, uh, we have MMO for that. Uh, but still, we have lizard men. We have uh, centaurs. Nobody used as a playable character a centaur. Uh, minotaurs, uh, medusas, uh, fish people, uh, cats, uh, dogs, any type of race. Think of it, the possibilities. And we have aliens. In one game, we have a one-winged one piece of shit that is uninspired. Tired turd 
uh, in other game, I don't know what the hell, uh, how that race is called in the World of Warcraft. Those are aliens, and and yet it is a, they have history. I know that is expanded on that, but it is a third. It is a, mm, it's a fantasy game. We had orcs. We had. Why? 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 I'm still. I'm so. Uh, I was waiting the opportunity to talk about that, but still. In this game, I have a gripe about race. We only, uh, at least in uh, where I, right now, uh, we don't have any other race, or I'm just I just missed something. We have only humans or human alike. Why? 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 If this is some kind of spiritual successor or uh, just straight up um, sequel or prequel or whatever it is, I need to refresh my memory to lineage too. Then why we are not using same races? We had elves, dark elves, humans, orcs, developed orcs without these fangs or whatever. Civilized orcs. Uh, we have dwarfs. And why not use this? Or uh, I'm not I, I'm not saying Kamiles because I hate that race. Uh, when they came out, it sucked. I mean, there were uh, Kamiles were very limited race, and yeah, whatever. I'm not talking about that. But in the world, there were so many different races, mobs. You, some of them. We had Selene or some kind of a horse uh, thingy on two legs. We had uh, a lot of things. Okay, I'm not... Mm, I'm running again. I'm not cutting it out. I'm not cutting it out. Methods okay. of traveling Cilicium. Exploring Sugar areas with varying begun. elevations is just one example of how traveling the world of Cilicium is a truly novel experience. Due to the dynamic nature of the land, torrential rains can cause floods and suddenly create large bodies of water to traverse. Throne on Liberty enables players to navigate these constantly shifting environments through morphing. Players can morph into a variety of different animals to aid in travel as they explore Cilicium. The decision to let players morph into animals in place of the traditional... I would like, uh, mounts. Transformation, me Maybe interesting, but... I would say most of the transformation should uh, work as a fighting ability. I'm transform, I'm fight, or whatever. But uh, I'm not so, so much on transformations. I would like some kind of cool mount, dragon, dog, mount was wolf, the subject whatever. of deep discussion by the team at NCSoft, so it's kind of like a druid from World of Warcraft. Within the development team, there has been much discussion about whether it's better to ride something special, like me, or to become something special yourself. Well, my mother told me I was special when I was young, so I mean, I already fit the latter category right there. To focus uh -huh. on the idea of becoming a special me. <laughs> we decided to feature the experience of transforming into different beings as a core aspect of Throne Liberty. Morphing into these different animals is a key part of the game. So the team worked hard to get it to feel right. Players can leap off a cliff and turn into a bird to take flight mid-descent, or transform into a sea turtle instantly by making contact with the ocean. Why a turtle? Okay, sure, not like a dolphin, not like a shark or something really cool or, or, or intimidating. No, a turtle. These Octopus. Still, I like mounts. Decisions require split-second thinking mounts. and fast transition. They do. They do. It, you require quick thinking when dipping your toe into a bathtub. Sure. In typical games, when you ride a mount, you often have to wait while the transformation occurs. However, no. Did these people never play Guild Wars? They're the same company who created the fucking game. That's a instant thing. That's not World of Warcraft where you need to uh, cast. 
The Throne of Liberty, since you become the creature yourself, would put significant effort into making the transition seamless without the laser interruptions. In addition to morphs, the game features shape shifts and playful transformations, all adhering to... So, like, a transformation like the sexy nojutsu from Naruto? I'd be down for that. Hell yeah. All nope. adhering to a soft nope. magic nope. system nope. Nope. within nope. the game's lore. This means players could transform into animals, magical creatures, golems, and even... And that's thing that you're gonna pay a pretty money if you want to get some kind of transformation into ground creature, sea creature, sky creature. Oh well, not such a bad thing unless that uh, creature is faster, can fly higher, is stronger, uh, more. Mo these things are used to travel, right? So the main thing is speed. If you pay for that, that's paid. If you pay for that and you get a lot more speed, that's pay to win. That's a way to speed. That's a pay to run. Fuck. Nobody gonna pay me to run. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sell myself to run. I hate running. I hate a lot of things, but I hate running. Enchanted me mechanical entities. Okay, no, I like the sound of that. I just, I don't want to have to turn into a turtle every time I go try and take a shower or a bath. And at the same time, th this isn't the first game that has done this when you shape shift and Buy something cool. Buy an octopus, buy a shark, buy a dolphin. But the stock, the default transformation will be turtle. In World of Warcraft, it's also instant, from what I recall. And she's out the Amazon game. I think not. World of Warcraft... Wait. When you shapeshift in World of Warcraft, it's also instant. From whatever. Oh, uh, shapeshift? Yeah, uh, I don't know, but uh, uh, from what I've read, I've never played World of Warcraft. But uh, I think I, uh, somebody said, I think so, or I'm, I was dreaming. Mount thing was casting. And people were angry because Guild Wars did it. Why can why World of Warcraft cannot do that? Uh, cast less uh, mount. I mean, uh, to mount you don't need to cast in Guild Wars. It's an instant thing. And she's out the Amazon games have a harmonious pairing. Yeah, because the the entire success of this game is riding solely on Amazon, not on NCSoft. The collaboration- Yeah, they actually fucked it, fucked it up in Korea somehow. I thought that... Uh, I thought that it is not possible because uh, Koreans are all for uh, things that uh, were buyable. Uh, that they can buy grind to no end, or buy and grind, or pay to grind, or whatever. ...between NCSoft and Amazon Games to bring Throne and Liberty to the West has been beneficial to both companies. And most of all, oh, yeah. to the game itself. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I that that was very unprofessional of me. I just, <laughs> I just couldn't contain myself Leave there. Your cam. <laughs> beneficial to the game. Amazon Games Publishing. A video game. Beneficial to it, sure. Uh, for its existence? Yeah, probably, maybe. Uh, but uh, NCSoft fucked it up. If Koreans doesn't, uh, don't like the game, you did something bad, real bad. Opening any game to a new audience, especially one as large as a new global audience, means the teams involved can get new and valuable feedback that helps to improve the game. Although, there are international players who enjoy the game on Korean servers, we don't often have the opportunity to collect and analyze their feedback comprehensively, says Moon. Yet, you, uh, you ban most of the players from other countries. Young Choi, Don't and Liberty Game Camp, uh, Game Camp Captain at NCSoft. Collaborating with Amazon Games has allowed us to receive feedback from a wider range of global users, which was extremely valuable to us. Because th this is pretty much your market, since no one really plays a Korean version. Amazon Games didn't simply present user needs That's as demands. They stone. used various reports and data to <laughs> convincingly pants. explain to our team why certain changes were necessary and how many users wanted them. Like the auto-grinding system, the auto-combat, yeah. Western players aren't typically fond of that. But at the same time, leaving the long, the, the lengthy, arduous grind... They have bots, I think. They have a big bot problem in in Korea, so I think 
will have the same problem. Minds that required autoplay to actually make even remotely tolerable in game without the autoplay grinding feature was a ridiculous idea this needs to be like drastically reined in or maybe they've done that maybe we'll, we'll be able to see whether that's an actual issue if you if you need autoplay to for people to tolerate your game your gameplay your progress in the game you fucked it up when the open beta rolls out. Daniel LaFuente, globalization designer manager at Amazon Games, agrees. From day one, we've been working tightly with NCSoft to make sure Throne and Liberty hits the mark for a global audience, just like they have been with Blue Protocol. We've been in the trenches together, running multiple public test phases to get direct feedback from players worldwide. That input has allowed us to really shape the game's direction in unison with NCSoft over the last year plus. The teams have worked together closely I still don't get it. They have translated uh, the game. Why they didn't launch in West? Maybe they, yeah, um, uh, it's kind of easy explanation because they uh, thought that, uh, and they thought it correctly that uh, to please Westerners will be a little bit harder than Koreans. But they did not expect that uh, the game will fail in Korea. And now the ass is on fire. We're listening to player feedback from around the world and making adjustments as they prepare the game for its Western launch in September. At the end of the day, it has been a truly collaborative effort adapting the core experience while also keeping the soul of what makes Throne and Liberty awesome. <laughs> all right, all right. Looking forward to launch. That's a cute character. Massive scale multiplayer battles, a dynamic and changing world, the ability to- That's a cute. And yet I'm more interested about equipment, armor, and uh, um, skins, weapons. Shapeshift as you explore, this is just scratching the surface of what Throne and Liberty has to offer players when it launches on September 17th. Eager players can experience some of this firsthand we even sooner, date. however, when the game enters an open beta this summer, running from July 18th through 23rd. Interested players can visit the Throne and Liberty site for more details on the beta. The teams at Amazon Games and NCSoft are eager to see players get into the world of Cilicium because they need the money. They're, they they can't feed their families. They oh, can't afford to I, keep their... I have an interesting question. Will there be a pay, uh, buy tab in in uh, in in uh, beta? I, I don't remember the game. I don't remember a lot of things, but still. I don't remember the game, but uh, uh, that was, uh, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, game was in uh, open beta testing, and if there was a uh, shop in beta testing, Maybe it's a uh, it's a usual thing, but to me that was a fucking shot in beta testing, open beta testing. There was a shop that you could buy stuff. Somehow that doesn't really work for me, and it uh, shows the uh, it, it's concerning thing. And I wonder if it will be in uh, this beta testing, in, Th in Throne and Liberty. Studio open, the Korean players aren't spending money. You need to help them out here. They're too poor to continue on. So th that, that is why they're so desperate to get us into Cilicium. And they're looking forward to what fans will spend in the game. Sorry, gravitate to most in the game. Both teams <laughs> certainly have ideas yeah. on what they think players will be most excited to experience. No skirts. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what you did there. Come no on. Cleavage. No. <laughs> that was petty. Many people highlight Throne and Liberty's ability to provide a smooth gaming experience, even in large-scale player environments, is one of its key strengths, said Lee. The distinguishing feature of a multiplayer online RPG, not an MMORPG, a multiplayer online RPG, compared to a single player game is the scale of players and in this aspect we take great pride in the tactical prowess of our development team. Beyond the technical aspects, there are many fun elements in the game's content design that are unique and we have various new content planned beyond what's showcased so far. 
The game is some seriously powerful tech under the hood that allows for these massive PvP battles with some events boasting thousands of players duking it out while maintaining that buttery smooth experience of all grown to love, said La Puente. Really, thousands of people on screen without a single FPS drop. What That must be impressive. That Even if it drops a little bit, then, uh, for example, minus 10 FPS, I'm not... I won't be angry because... Uh, uh, Quite frankly, not a lot of games ca uh, can pull off that. Because uh, optimizations, it requires... Uh, well, we all saw uh, in a lot of games that uh, massive, uh, ma massive PvP, massive events... Ha um, s we have problems with FPS dropping and a little bit of crashing. So I want to see that. I want to see how that will work. I hope I'll be able to do that. I hope I will be able to see that. That, that would be impressive to see, definitely. A sense of scale was, and spectacle is awesome. What I'm most excited about is the strong community aspects. Throwing the community in an MMO. Throwing Liberty is an exceptionally deep guild system, giving players the experience of bonding with your friends as you take on challenges together. It's got the perfect blend of modern features that allow you to truly engage at scale. The open beta begins the 17th. Make sure you pre-register now. I'm going to attempt to get into it. Maybe they'll just give me access. Maybe, I don't know, they'll give me some keys to give away. Not entirely sure. Keep an eye on the channel or my Twitter for more updates on that. I'm always excited for new MMOs. I, I'm i not going to judge the game before I play it. I've heard a lot of very negative feedback about the game, but it, I, I, I sometimes have different thoughts and opinions on games for other people. Like, I really enjoyed Soul Worker, and I know a lot of people didn't. So, I guess we'll find out soon whether or not we should be excited for the game. And just you know, slightly longer than that, we'll be able to find out whether or not the game's even good. Now, if this is of no interest to you, absolutely no problem. I got you covered two videos on screen right now and might be more up your alley. That's out, bro. <laughs> that outro. <laughs> it killed me right now. I think my sugar starts to crash from... from ice cream. I'm now a little bit sleepy. I think I uh, blew off the steam a little bit. And by the way, by the way, before I leave, uh, if I have, I will repeat myself. If I have the opportunity, I will play the game. I will be very critical about it, especially about the shop. But still, if the game is good, I hope it won't die very fast. But uh, I hope people will give opportunity to experience the game without... Uh, it's free, for fuck's sake, what you're gonna lose? A little bit of time? Eh. Eh. Nothing better to do, in my opinion. If you're enjoying uh, RPGs, if you're enjoying MMO online... Uh, I'm sorry, online RPGs, then, uh, then, then, then... Spare a little, bit, a little bit of time. If the game is good, okay. Uh, I, uh, I, I hope uh, people won't let it die off. Uh, but, um, yeah. I will play it if I have the possibility. Okay, bye. I will see you soon.